All right, good morning, everybody. Today's video, we are over here in Sukhothai. We're in the former capital of Thailand, back when it was Siam. Before Ayutthaya, before Bangkok, this was the capital of Thailand. Anyway, uh, we're gonna start and we're gonna go over there and we're gonna check out the Sukhothai Historical Park. But before we go, I wanted to show you kind of a great way to, uh, when you come here, to stay, because it's super, super easy. I'm staying at what is called the Wake Up at Mung Khao. It's a boutique hotel. And I'm right here on the balcony and I'm overlooking, the park is right over there. It's probably, I don't know, maybe 200 meters away or so. And I'm out here on the balcony. So whenever I come to Sukhothai, I always stay here at this hotel just because it's super, super convenient. And it's a short little walk to the park and you can start your day. So let me show you the hotel and then we'll walk over to the park. The white building right there, that is the Ramkum Hang Museum. And the entrance to the park is right on the other side of those trees. And here's the, uh, the balcony, so you can sit out here in the evening and you can uh, hang out. And then uh, the rooms are quite nice. This is the room, plenty big for, uh, for two people. And it has a bathroom and a shower and all of that. So the bathroom, the shower, everything uh, is nice, has a little mini fridge, the toiletries, and uh, the people here are super, super nice, so uh, I would recommend it. And I'll put the uh, contact information in the uh, video. All right, so now let's go over there to the park. And yeah, it's quite nice, the hotel has a lot of charm to it. It has all this uh, teak wood, and it's just a little two-story hotel here. And the lobby has a map on the wall has a place here to uh, just kind of hang out and uh, you can get directions and stuff like that from the uh, the owners they're really nice and they'll help you all right so we'll just walk right down over there and we'll go to the park now like i said it's uh you can see that red and white building that's how close you are to the entrance to the park right over next to the entrance to the park is the museum and the museum's fun to go and uh, look around in you can see they have the dual pricing here so it's 150 baht for a foreigner and it's 30 baht for uh, Thai. So, so to get into the park, it's 100 baht. And it looks like it's uh, 20 baht for the Thais. So the dual pricing is uh, always in effect here. And you can rent these little trams also if you don't want to walk around. So it looks like it's 60 baht to get on the little tram. All right, so let's get a ticket and then we'll go in and look. Okay, so it's a one day ticket and it's admission for one. I tried to see if they would let me get in with a work permit, but they never uh, do that anymore. Okay, so we came in right over here. This is the ticket window and then uh, Wat Mai is that temple right over there and kind of the reason I wanted to come today is I really wanted to just come over here mainly to see Wat Maha Hat and I wanted to come over here and see Wat Sari Sawi and whenever I come here I always like to come early in the morning that's when all the lotuses are bloomed out and I always try to get a good picture of the lotuses in front of Wat Maha Hat so uh, you can get on the tram right here and you can go around. I'm just gonna walk. It's a nice, pleasant morning and you can enjoy it. They have all this water in here, some nice shade trees, and it's really nice. Now you still want to bring in water because it is Thailand and it gets super, super hot, if, especially if you're not used to it. So let's go, uh, let's go see what we see. You can see the ruins off in the, in the distance over there. This is always great. Now they, uh, they have a night market now that they're doing in the evenings until eight o'clock. And I came here last night and you just uh, can walk in. It's after the park closes, they uh, open it up and you can walk down in there and uh, get some food and stuff like that. I didn't make a video, I just took a couple pictures. So maybe I'll stick those in the video also so you can kind of see what it's like. You can see how this looks. Right over there, there is a statue for King Ramkumhang. He's one of the eight great Thai kings. He's the one that's credited for uh, coming up with the Thai alphabet. And then they have a huge water feature and another temple over there. This is Wat Maha Hat, which is a famous temple name. There's a lot of these named with the same all around Thailand. And they're the, like really a high prestige temple. Like the Wat Maha Hat in 
Ayutthaya is massive. It was uh, I think it means like the Temple of the Relic. I think that's what it, the translation is. You can see here there's uh, all kinds of people climbing around on it already. So let's go up in there. This is my favorite temple in this park. We're inside here of the perimeter wall of Wat Mahahat. This was the main temple in all of Sukhothai. And the, uh, I guess the, one of the Thai, or the Sukhothai kings, the Lanai or Lamai, whatever his name was, his relics are supposedly interned here. Now there was a total of 200 chetis at this temple, which is amazing. So we'll look up here and then we'll go in and we'll look at the, the main one. Those, the coolest ones that I like are these standing Buddha that are in here. I like that. Beware of falling down the stairs. People get distracted up here. They get excited and can fall off. Yeah, this is fantastic. And you can see the chetty right behind it. So here is the, the Buddha. And you don't climb up there. You can uh, make merit right here like she's doing. And then this uh, temple ground is just kind of sprawling. You see they have the, the little ponds. And there's another t temple over there. And then uh, this would have all been covered. So this would have been a hall. These are the pillars for it. But uh, nothing is remaining now except for just the, uh, the support beams. And the same here. So this would have walked into like a wee hand. And you would have been able to walk all through here. That would have been really nice. The scale of this place is amazing. So the Buddha is way up there. And you can see here, this is probably like three meters tall, two and a half meters tall. And that just gets you up to the, the base of the building. You got some pigeons up there. And then over here is one of the standing Buddhas. And this would have been like a little shrine right here and some more of the minor chetis. You have one of the seated Buddha in the Sukho style. Sukho Thai style, you can see the face kind of looks like an egg. Everybody of the Thais always talk about how beautiful the Sukho Thai style is. There's some more seated Buddhas and there's just all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can just wander around in here. You have little Little shrines, little chetties all over. Just tons and tons of stuff. So this little stupa would have had some standing Buddha images inside of it. Really like the architecture here of these. And this one here would have just had images all through it. You can see each one of those little notches would have had images. And then we have just this really nice Chetty here. The top is all missing, but it would have had that like little dome and spire up at the top. And it would have been built in the Sukho Thai style. This is really, really nice right here. So you have the standing Buddha and it's just massive. I don't know how tall it is, but it's probably like, like 18 to 20 meters or so. And then here is the center spire of this temple. And it has the four small chetties around on the cardinal directions. And then these are some Khmer style prongs that are kind of in between. So this is just unbelievable. And then at the base of the Chetty, you can see here it has all those images all around. So right there would have had a Buddha image. Now what's hanging from the top, you can see it has a honeycomb. So the bees are uh, utilizing it. Oh, this is nice. So right here they have an altar. And it's right at the base of this chetty. You can see the detail work in the plaster there, that Khmer prong has like the Naga on the corners. And you can see the outline of where they had a Buddha in there before. And then the seated Buddha and then all of these. Now this would have been quite interesting because this would have had like some coverings here. There's some stairs where you could take up there, but now they don't allow you to go up. You can just see it from down here. Now, right above, like that little prong over there, they have that giant that's uh, stealing the moon. Oh, that's really nice. And you can see 
some more of that detail work. So right up above, right up there, that's where that, that giant that's stealing the moon is. So they have him on all four of the directions. And then the Naga are down on the lower one. And then up there to the spire. It's just perfect. So they've done a nice job with keeping it preserved. And then on the right side of this is another one of these giant standing Buddhas. And then another little prong. Over on this side, they actually still do have some of the Buddhas in those little nooks. They have two of them. And then up there would have been a scene right above it. Now you see the styling of this is definitely the Sukhothai. It's kind of an elegant look. You know, see the uh, Ayutthaya style has a little bit different features in the face and the hair and the eyebrows and stuff. And these will all have their eyes like down and another nice Buddha out here. Now, just to kind of give you some perspective, most of the people here were farmers. I mean, uh, this was fertile land. So the whole area here was under cultivation with rice and other various crops. And so the people that would have been able to go to the city, just think about how awe-inspiring this would have been. So you come in out of the country and you come here to Sugotai and you see this temple and you see these 200 chetis, you see these standing Buddhas, you just see all of this. It would have definitely been amazing for them. So I come here and you see this, there's a Thai guide. He's speaking French and I just was over on the other side and there was a Thai guide speaking Spanish. So there are other languages other than uh, than English and Thai available. Just to the east of that Wat Maha Hat, here is what they call the Prasat. I think this used to be the old like uh, palace for King Ram Kumhang. And I guess like uh, King Chulalong Korn came over here and in placed a, a stone inscription in that telling the story of Sukhothai. Okay, so here we are at Wat Si Sawat. Now this is a kind of a unique little temple over here. This is a former, what they believe is a Hindu temple. And the uh, three little prongs are built in the Lotbury style. They're the long slender prongs. King Rama VI came over here and visited this temple when he was a crown prince. And they found some like inscriptions and all of that with Vishnu and a few other things. And they de decided that this was definitely a Hindu sanctuary here in Sukhothai. Yeah, I wanted to come over here. This is one of my favorite temples. It's not very big, but it's still really interesting. So you see how they built this hall. They put the slits in the walls for a little cross breeze. And it was originally Hindu, and then they converted it into Buddhism. Now what's funny is last time I came here, I actually uh, went down below this prong. There's a little opening down here where you could go into the relic and it was filled with water and I just like stepped in. It looks like today it's dry. But you can see here they have all the, the detail work. You have the Naga, all of that that's on the sides of these little prongs. Yeah, let's look down here. Yeah, it was pitch black and uh, yeah, it's, it was pitch black and I just stepped right into all this water. <laughs> Ooh. Now, I don't know if you can see up there, but that's, uh, that's wood and it is really, really musty and it smells like guano. So the bats have been coming in here and resting. So they would have probably had at one point would have had like that little, um, that little stone thing that they do for uh, Shiva and they pour the water on it. So that would have probably been down at the base of that. And here they had some auxiliary buildings and they have this little walkway here. This actually right here doesn't look like it's original. Looks like it's been added. So maybe there was a doorway where you could come from inside of that wee hand. And then this would have been covered. You can see now they're just a place for the pigeons to roost. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, this is probably my second favorite temple here. It's really small, but I really like this. So I was talking to that French guy and uh, I asked him if the bats got him while he was in here. And he said, oh, it's totally empty. I told him, ah, oh, don't worry. They won't eat too much. So you can see here, they used to have plaster. So this all had detail work all in the plaster. 
and most of it is just deteriorated off. And then you can see, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it goes up just to like a cone. And then it has some wooden cross beams up there. Oh, this is really nice. Yeah, this is right here. You can just see the faint outline of like a little mural they had in here. You can see the third little prong here. It has probably the best stucco work right there around the top. I mean, that is just awesome. I like how they've done the naga and it kind of combines the tail right over the, uh, the arch. That's kind of, to me, like a Lana style. The Lana do that up there in some of their temples around Chiang Mai. And you can see here also, this looks like this doorway was added later on. And I'm not sure why, but this used to be like a little walkway. You go around the inside there. All right, let's look in this last one. It'll be similar to those others. Yeah, not a whole lot more to see here. There's even less of the plaster on the walls here. So they had this right here. This would have been a building like a wee hand. And this is on, I think, the south end here. And you can see how these are like octagonal shaped. And then they had some notches built right up there. So they put in some Buddha images. And then they would have had a, a Buddha sitting right there. And it would have led you into the temple itself. Yeah, this is really nice. I like this temple. So all out here amongst these trees, there are some various ruins. And then they have some moats and all of that that were dug around through here. Most of the temples are just down to their base, but the best ones of course are Wat Mahahat and a few others. All right, so you can see how the water is. There's a temple that's built out there on that little island. And then this temple right over here. Now they've came in, they've cleaned these moats out. Before there was a lot more lilies, but they've either drained them or cleaned them out. So it's not as uh, nice to see early in the morning as it used to be. This is a small little temple here. This is Wat Tap Neng Nguyen. And you can see here, this would have had a roof over it. That's just the uh, base of the columns now. It has a really nice seated Buddha, but the highlight of this is that fantastic jetty. You can see definitely Sukhothai styling. It's just beautiful. Then it has the Buddha images on the four cardinal directions. And there would have been a small little Buddha image right there at the top. There's like a little lotus shaped arch, but there's no relic in there. And they've erected this. This is a new construction here with the Buddha right in front of that little chetty. Too bad the spire and everything is missing. So there would have probably been, like it would have been balanced. There would have probably been another building back behind and another chetty on the other side but it's still really nice to see. So we're gonna take a look at our last little temple here that we're gonna look at today. This is what Sa Si. And it's a simple little Sri Lankan style jetty with a ordination hall and a wee han here kind of that are down in ruins. And it's out here on this little island. Now the monks used to do like a purification ceremony. They saw the water as being able to purify you and as holy. So they would do that out here on this little island. Now what's interesting is that this actually back not too long ago, I think in like the 70s, that road that's way over there, you can see that little uh, concrete truck, but that road used to go right down through the middle of this ruin and they've came back in and they've preserved it. And how nice is this? So we have a little minor JD with the little notches that would have had the Buddhas inside of it and then the, the bell-shaped Sri Lankan style jetty and then this is the the hall with a preserved Buddha that's st sitting right up there. So this is the inside of this wee hand. So they had the columns here and you can see they would have had the like the lotus decoration up on top so this would have been a high point in the ceiling and then it would have sloped down to the side now, I don't know if these originally were octagonal shaped like this or if that's how they restored them, but this is an Ayutthaya trait here with uh, eight sided columns. Maybe they shared this with uh, Sukhothai or it could be just the way they restored them. And you can see the top of the chetty. Yeah, it's really a beautiful building. 
with a nice Buddha. And then right behind it, when we look right here, this is the Wee Hand, and right across that small little bridge is the Ordination Hall. So the way they have it built now is this is just out here on its own little island. Maybe this was at one time an island also back in the old days. I'm not sure, I have no idea. Could have been instead of a bridge, a little causeway to lead over here. But I'm sure that the water was all around here. And you can see this is uh, the Ordination Hall. These are the little Buasima stones. And then this would have had uh, like a covered walkway around it. And then the entrance would have probably been to the east. So there would have been an entrance over here and there would have been a Buddha seated, seated right there facing towards the east, towards the rising sun. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, they have an entrance over here. So yeah, this would have been fantastic. This would have been a nice little building. Okay, so one more look here at this temple. So you'd have been able to go right from the ordination hall to the wee hand to the chetty and then just take a look around the park. So right over there, that is what Maha Hat. And there's a few other temples and stuff scattered around. There's the Ramkam Hang Memorial. There's some chetties. And outside of the park, there's also quite a few little ruins. I've done some videos around here that uh, definitely some of these smaller little chetties and temples are worth stopping and taking a look at. All right, guys, so that's gonna finish up our video over here at Sukhothai Historical Park. This is fantastic. This is a great part of Thailand. I've been here many times. I just came over here today to mainly see Wat Maha Hat and uh, the Sri Sawat. I like those two temples the most, but there's quite a few others here that are quite nice. Uh, there's a lot that are here that are just down to the base and there's some that are out in the trees that you can't, you can't see. But the ones that you can get out and walk around in are fantastic. This is definitely a good place to come. So this is overshadowed a lot by Ayutthaya. I actually like coming up here a little better than Ayutthaya. Ayutthaya was just so massive. There's so much more to see there than there is here in Sukhothai. But this has such a great feel. It's uh, the walking around here. It's under the trees. It feels nice. I like to come out here early in the morning before it gets too hot. And years past that, I always come and get some good pictures with uh, the little lilies bloomed out in the morning, but it looks like all these little canals have been cleaned up since I was here last time. They've came in and they've kind of dredged them and they've made them deeper. And so all the lilies are gone, which is a shame because uh, I got some great pictures here years past, but it is what it is. I'll come again in a year. Maybe there'll be more lilies back out again next year, whenever I come again. And what I'll do is I'll pin a comment from the one video I made here uh, I guess about a year and a half ago or so. And then you can see I did a little bit more detail of some of these smaller little temples. Today, I just wanted to see kind of the big stuff. I was uh, excited to see Wat Maha Hat. So anyway, if you're uh, excited about it, make sure you click like and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I show you things that I see and do, and I go to places like this. I mean, for me, I jumped on the motorcycle and uh, I rode up here to Sukhothai. So very few people have the luxury of that to be able to just on a whim, on a, on a weekend, come up here and see a World Heritage Site, but I do. So uh, anyway, I got to make a video and share it a little bit with you. So uh, definitely uh, subscribe and then you're notified when I do other videos like this. And leave me a comment if you have any questions or want to know something, ask me in a comment down below. And from over here in Sukhothai, remember guys, life is a journey. So until next time, enjoy. <laughs>